Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. I'd like to welcome in Representative Bobby Nardalillo, candidate for the Republican nomination for the U.S. Senate, here with us in studio. Has been here before. You've talked with Josh Fenton now. I get the pleasure of having to interview you today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, I appreciate your coming in because you've put forth a couple of proposals in recent days about plans, if elected, what you would do. And one of the ones I wanted to start with was the salary of a United States Senator. You put one forth that said you would actually give some of that money back. Correct. I, I, I think the most important thing to look at is, is the whole philosophy of public service. And uh, you're serving the public, the community, and those that uh, do elect you. Going uh, to Washington and being there with my colleagues doesn't guarantee that I'm going to be able to bring things back to the state. You fight, but there are, there are no guarantees. And uh, one of the guarantees, and I, I pledged, as you, as you brought up, to, to be able to offer a guarantee. And uh, the homeless rate and poverty is, is increased here in Rhode Island. And what I said I would do was I would take 25% uh, of the salary every year for six years um, and reinvest that into um, the homeless shelters and those in need. And that would be a guarantee that I know every year while I'm fighting for good policy for those who elected me, there's no guarantee that uh, we see the way politics unfortunately goes on everywhere. And, and when I say there's too much politics, uh, it does water down the public service. But I know that, you know, in my heart that every year that I've dedicated a good pathway, a good pathway to, um, to address some of the needs, especially for those who are, who are in dire need here in our state. And you've challenged U.S. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse to do the same, have you not? I have, um, I, and I actually challenge all of the congressional delegation to do the same. Um, I think it's important that you're giving back, and I did notice uh, that my opponent, uh, he's, he's returned donations. He's uh, re reinvested those donations into charitable contributions. Uh, in our state, but to, to be able to actually take some of your personal monies. And uh, over six years, that's two, it's over $250,000 that, you know, will be reinvested back. And I think that that will make an impact, but it shows you that I'm running for the office for all of the right reasons. And I think it's very important that folks know while we're going to talk about tax reforms and fighting for the middle class and rebuilding the middle class, the rich are always going to be rich. Um, but those who are in the middle class, they're struggling, and most importantly, those who are poverty-stricken really need um, assistance, and this would, this would definitely help. So speaking of folks in need and other one, as we stay local here before we go to more national politics, the proposal you put forth to help veterans here, you said we can do it in one small way, and if one small way means relieving them of tolls over the Pell Bridge, that's a proposal you put forth. Uh, and actually, this came up in conversation. I was, I was very excited um, announcing uh, in May, being able to be able to cross the state from socket to Westerly, and a lot of the folks that I have been speaking with have been veterans, and hearing their stories of sacrifice and time away and their fight uh, for us and our freedoms, uh, I was thinking of ways to, to be able to show an appreciation a real big thank you and uh, going over the over the bridge especially with our naval base there and but since announcing the proposal the the, the feedback has been You've tremendous. You've gotten big feedback from this. And, and it's very excited to know that this piece of proposal will be so impactful to, to those active service members and veterans. So a couple of proposals put forth on the local level but let's take a tack now to the national of course, running on the Republican, looking for the Republican nod here, would want to be one of the Republican members of Congress. What's your reaction to what happened in Alabama with Roy Moore being defeated by Doug Jones? Why do you think he lost? So I was never uh, a supporter of Roy Moore. Um, um, I would have preferred to see uh, Luther win. Um, and then when uh, Roy Moore did take, uh, take the win, I, I wasn't supportive all through that process. and. Uh, in fact, when the allegations did come up, here. Sure. Thank you. in mm -hmm. fact, when the allegations came up, um, they continue to become more severe, and it, it was it was disheartening, disgusting, and I, he would have never received um, my support. So initially, uh, I had that that feeling about about him not being the appropriate candidate, mm -hmm. and as time progressed, sure enough, um, 
we saw more allegations. So does that go to show really the importance of each party choosing the best candidate to run? We had Kevin Alessane from the Democratic Party and yesterday making that same to saying it really is the strength of the candidate. Do you think that was the Republicans downfall in Alabama? Um, I would probably say that picking obviously the strongest candidate to represent um, the office that they're being elected for is important and properly vetting the individual um, is tremendously important because it's reflective of your party. Uh, this gentleman happened to be uh, a Republican. Uh, Democrats, we, we see, have the same issues and, and concerns. So I think oh, it's not it, just one party or the other. That's correct, <laughs> and, and that I ideally is is the process. You want the individual to be properly vetted if they're going to be endorsed or supported by the party and. And uh, Roy Moore was definitely not reflective of uh, a Republican-valued party. And what are we? What's your take on what's happening right now with tax reform in D.C. as the Republicans are really kind of striving for that win in short order? Um, as it's all played out, talk with us about your thoughts on how it could impact Rhode Islanders here. Sure, I followed the process since the beginning, which it's evolved several different times, and we're at the cusp of of it passing, um, but. As we could see, actually today, Rubio and Lee are holding back because they'd like an increase in the child uh, credit tax. Uh, they had Rubio had voted twice already on it, so uh, it's it's a little bit confusing when it comes to that. It it's getting into a little bit of politics, it, if you will, <laughs> and and it's and that's what we're seeing. But mm. we're looking at an economy that has been at a standstill, stagnant, um, and. This I see, while no policy is ever perfect, we never see perfect legislation. We look at legislation in, in the efforts of, will this progress our state? Will this progress our country forward? And uh, 180, I believe it was 181 or 82 letters from economists in favor of the fact that this will put our country forward. And, and it's it's motivating. I mean, there are there as I said, there's no perfect legislation. So there are some things that, you know, are not perfect, ideally. But this is something that will strongly make us stand out again. So before I let you go, because you're balancing both being a rep and running for higher office, when the assembly goes back in in 18, what we've been hearing is a projected 60 million deficit for closing out FY18, a projected 200 million deficit at FY19. How is the assembly going to begin to tackle this? Well, I, ideally, I think fiscal responsibility uh, should have been identified way back at the beginning before all of uh, the giveaways were being put out there. And, you know, the, the optimism from uh, the governor's office really, really put us in a tight spot. I think it's it's time to, to listen to the Republicans. I, I think being fiscally responsible and, and all the initiatives that we put forward, these are things that should be reflective of why we could be in a better spot, let's say it that way. Well, we're going to continue to watch you at the Assembly and on the campaign trail, but again, with these announcements that you made in recent weeks, wanted you in here to really talk with viewers. I know you've been in here before, and I know we'll have you back in in the future. So. Brett, Bob, Renato, Lillo, I appreciate your taking the time to come in today. Thank you so much. We will talk soon. Be safe on the roads out there. I'll let you around the corner. Will okay, do. thanks. Representative Bobby Nardolillo here to talk about his run for U.S. Senate, looking for the Republican nod here in Rhode Island. Made a couple of announcements that he wanted to come in and give us the opportunity to talk with you, the viewers, about. So thank you to Rep. Bobby Nardolillo. We'll, I'm sure, have him back in the studio in the near future. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with our last and final guest here at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. We'll be right back.